now that we've made all of the main motifs, and we should have 12 of those, we are ready to make our half hexagons. So we need to make a couple of different versions of half hexagons. We need to make some that are shaped like this, that have these short edges here, and then come to a point, they've got one, two, three points, and that's basically just this hexagon folded in half like this. But we also need to make some that fold like this, so from point to point. So we only have two points on these and like half a point here down at the ends. Now it's really similar because the middle is almost exactly the same that we need to make for them. And we just slightly change the position of the rows of this F and then the um, A that we use for it. So don't worry, it's not tricky. I'll talk you through the whole thing. But one thing I do want to mention before we go, obviously, um, these are worked in the round, so we have the right side facing us the whole time that we're working the full hexagons. Whereas with the half hexagons, obviously we're going to be doing a row, and then we're going to be stopping, and if we work um, as true to this to keep it to the right side, what we'll need to do is break our yarn at the end of a row, and then start again at the beginning. And that will make sure that everything is on the right side. And if I'm honest, that's how I did it when I first thought about this pattern. And I have lots and lots of prototypes like this one, all with the right side facing. But do you know what? It gives you loads and loads of ends to, to weave in because you've got two ends then per row that you're doing. So it's fine, but you end up, you know, even, even with all the crochet that I've done, you end up with slightly wonky and wibbly lines, but that doesn't necessarily matter because they're going to get covered by the edge of the blanket anyway. Um, but just for ease of it, what I've suggested in the pattern is that you actually turn your rows. And I have the start of one here, the middle, and this is in turned rows, and I don't think you can really tell the difference, or not enough anyway, that it will matter. So if you want to save yourself lots of ends, do it as I do it in this tutorial, and I'm going to turn my rows, but if you want to stay completely true to the pattern and weave in all the ends, what you'll need to do is break your yarn um, and begin at the first stitch again with the right side facing. The pattern is exactly the same, it just depends whether you turn and work on the wrong side or whether you break your yarn and start on the right side again. So whichever you choose, pop to the pattern and what we're going to begin with first is these um, what are called long edge half hexagons. So find where you are for that and find the colour chart that tells you what colours we need to use in what sequence for them and then pop back and we'll get cracking making one. So we're going to begin our half hexagon as we did with the full hexagon but I'm going to show you a different version because I said didn't I about doing the magic ring which you can absolutely still do and start or what you may also like to try is to pop a slip knot on your hook and then just simply chain two. And then what we'll do to begin is work back into that second chain from the hook and it will give you a lovely neat center as well. So that's another option that you can try if you don't enjoy doing the magic ring. But whichever you choose, we're now going to work six double crochet into your second chain from the hook or your magic ring, whichever you choose. And that is row one complete. Now, as I say, decide whether you want to break your yarn and begin at this start again, but that will give you lots and lots of ends, or whether you're going to do it like I'm doing here and turn your work. So we now, for row two, need to chain one, and then we're going to work a half double crochet in that first stitch, so actually into the stitch. And then next, you'll remember on the full, uh, full hexagon, we worked in between the stitches, didn't we, for this round? So what we're going to do again there is work in between the first and the second stitch. We're going to pop two half double crochet in there. And then we're going to work into the space between the next two stitches. So pull everything apart and find out where you're going to be. Pop that into there. We'll pop two half double crochets in there. You probably guess what we carry on doing now. <laughs> two in between each of the stitches. So two in here, 
It's so tricky not to keep hold of it. I'm trying not, desperately trying not to cover it up with my thumb for you. So let's pull it apart. There we go, in between those two stitches. One and two. And then the last two stitches, we'll pop two in between those. And then to finish off, we are going to pop one half double crochet in the very last stitch of the row. And that should give you, she says, as she gets tangled, that should give you 12 stitches for that row. And so now we're ready to turn. And now I'm going to start this row by chaining one. And now I'm going to double crochet into this first stitch. But you'll see because we've now decided to turn over and work in rows, turned rows, the half double crochet presents itself differently. So we've got this extra loop here. But what we did, if we want to be consistent with our um, full half hexagons, we went through the full part of the stitch. We didn't have any loop showing forward. So what I'm going to suggest we do it is a bit fiddly, but I'm going to suggest that you scoop right under that all of the loops of that stitch and work your double crochet there. Then we're going to chain one and then we're going to pop two double crochet in the very next stitch. So that's one and two. <laughs> and then we chain one. This should feel nice and familiar because it's what we did on the main ones. We're going to skip the next one and then we're going to double crochet two into the next one. So that gets repeated, we're going to chain one, skip one, and then work two into the next. We're going to chain one, we're going to skip one, and then we'll work two into the next. Chain one, skip one, two into the next. And then we'll find that we've got two left. So we'll chain one, we'll skip one, and we'll pop one double crochet into that very last one. So then that's row three completed. Now we turn for row four. And for row four, we are going to chain three. And then we're going to slip stitch into that first chain one space. And then we're going to chain six. And then we're going to find the next chain one space and we'll pop a oops, slip stitch into that. And then chain six. And then a slip stitch in the next chain one space. chain that six, slip stitch in a chain one space, then chain six, slip stitch in the chain one space. Oh, it feels like there's lots of them. There aren't, but it feels like lots. <laughs> slip stitch in this chain one space here and then you'll see you've just got one stitch left so what we're going to do is when I get it through the hole of the yarn um, chain three and then slip stitch in that last stitch and what you'll then have is three chain three spaces and one two three four five chain six spaces that's the correct amount that you should have and then we're ready to turn. Now, this is exactly the same whether you're working a long edge half hexagon or a short edge half hexagon, that's really tricky to say. So, so for whichever version um, you're working on, this is where we're, we're at the same point. Now, the next row and the subsequent rows are different because then that's what gives us whether we go up this way and like that or whether we go like that and like that. So, whichever version you're making, 
Now, if you're making the, so if you're now making the short edge half hexagon, whiz away to find the video that does the other shape for you, but we're gonna carry on here and do the long edge half hexagon. Okay, so our next step for row five is going to be that we work two single crochet into that chain three space. And then into this chain six space, we're going to work two half double crochet, a double crochet, a chain two, another double crochet, and two more half double crochet. Now you might, this is hopefully nice and familiar for making the full hexagons. And then the next chain two space gets two single crochet in it. So the next chain six space gets the same as this one. We get two half double crochet, one double crochet, chain two, half double, uh, no, double crochet, sorry, <laughs> and then two half double crochet. Then we're going to work two single crochet in the next chain six space. And then we're going to repeat this into the chain six here. And then the final chain three space is going to have two single crochet in it. And that is row five complete. So now what we need to do is break our yarn because it is time to add color F. And we're going to go on the right side facing. So the right side will be the side that we have currently finished on looking up at us. So we're going to want to start at this stitch here. So let's join to that first stitch with color F and we're going to chain one and then we're going to double crochet into that first stitch. And then the next stitch, which is our second single crochet from the row below, we're going to work um, a double crochet, a chain one and a double crochet all into that same place. Then we're going to chain one we're going to skip the next three stitches, which is the side, the upward side of this kind of shell stitch here. And then we're going to work into that chain two space and we're going to pop three half double crochet in there. And then we're going to chain one. We'll skip the next three. And then in the single crochet here, we're going to pop a double crochet, a chain one and a double crochet. And then the next stitch along gets the same. It gets a double crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet. And then we chain one, we skip three, and then we work three half double crochet into that chain two space. We chain one, we skip three, and then we work our double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then the same into the next stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then we chain one, and then we're, where are we? Here we are, one, two, three skipped, and then one, two, and three half double crochet in that chain two, chain one, skip the next three, and then we work our double crochet, chain one, oops, double crochet, and then finally just one double crochet into that last one. And now because we're changing colour, we are going to break our yarn. So I promise less ends, but not, not no ends. <laughs> break the yarn and then grab your colour A and we will start from this side again and we will work the border. So here we are joining to that first stitch with the right side facing. We've got A and we're going to chain one 
and then we're going to half double crochet into the next six, which includes our chains as well. So that's one, two, here's a chain here, three, four, number five is also a chain, and six. Now in the next stitch, we need to work our point. So we're going to pop a double crochet, a chain one and a double crochet. And then we're going to work a half double crochet in the next three. One, two and then three. And then we're going to work into this chain one space. We're going to skip this. Uh, no, we're not skipping a stitch, Anna. Don't say that. We're going to work into that full chain here and we're going to pop two half double crochets in there. Now we're going to skip two stitches. We're going to skip this stitch and that stitch. And you might remember this from the full hexagons. Then we go two half double crochet in the next one. And then we work a half double crochet in the next three. And then we're ready to work a point. So we go double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then we're ready to work one half double crochet, two half double crochet, three half double crochet, and then two half double crochet in that chain one space. Two half double crochet in the next chain one space so you've skipped those two stitches in the middle there and then a half double crochet in the next three and then we make a new point so a double crochet a chain one and a double crochet and then we do a half double crochet in the next six. And then although we are working in the same yarn for the same color rather for the next row, I do recommend that we break the yarn and not turn here. Um, and I know that gives us ends, but it is really worth it because of the detailing that we have on these half hexagons in this color. So break your yarn and then get ready to join here at this first stitch again. So we're going to pop our hook through that first stitch we're going to chain one and then we're going to double crochet in that first one. And then as you probably remember, we then started working in the back loops of these stitches. So we're going to work in the back loop of the next five. So five double crochet there. And then what we're going to do is skip this next stitch and we're going to pop a new corner in here in that chain one space. And it's going to be two double crochet, a chain one and another two double crochet all in that same chain one space. And then we're going to skip the next stitch and then we'll pop a double crochet in the back loop of the next 10. Now we skip the next stitch and into that chain one space. You've probably guessed it. We've got two double crochet, chain one, and another two double crochet. We skip this stitch and then to the backs we go double crochet into the next 10.
Now we're ready to make another point. So we're going to go into that chain one space with two double crochet, a chain one, and two double crochet. And now we skip the next stitch and we work into the back loop of five. Try not to get in a tangle with your ends. <laughs> now the very last stitch, I recommend that we pop into the full part of the stitch. Um, and it, you'll probably notice that that's what I did at the first stitch as well. Um, just because that helps you get a much neater edge, I feel. So then we break our yarn and we get ready to keep this facing us here and we're going to join at this first stitch again for the final round. So this final round, we join, not round, it's a row, Hannah. We join our yarn and we chain one and then we're going to pop a double crochet into that first stitch. Now you remember when we did the full hexagons, we flipped our work forward and we worked into the back bar of the stitches of this final round. And so that's what we need to do here as well. We're going to work into the back bar of the next five. So remember we scoop it over and then we find this bar here. And we work into one and then into two. three, four and five and we've come to our point and we're going to skip two and then work into that chain one space and our point here is bigger again so we work one, two, three stitches there, a chain one Oh, I'm getting really tangled here at the side. I wish I could show you, you'd laugh at me. Ah. Here we go. Oh, and I'm back. And I've chained one, and then we've got one, two, three more double crochet into that chain one space. So it's quite a big, big amount of stitches to fit in there. And then we skip the next two, and then you've guessed it, we're on to the back bars again of the next ten. And then after those ten, we're going to skip two and then work our point. So that's three double crochet, chain one and then three double crochet all into that chain one space. Now we skip two, work into the back bar of the next 10. Then we're ready to make our point. So we skip two and we work one, two, three double crochet, chain one, and then another three, all in that same chain one space. Then we skip two, pop into the back bar, a double crochet into five. And then to finish off, we need a double crochet in that very last stitch. And then we're ready to break our yarn for the last time. And that's one of our long edge half hexagons made. So you'll see in the pattern that I think you need to make eight of these in various different colors, but the center is all a block color in them. So it makes sense to turn your rows if you would like to, or if you want to, as a comparison here, you can um, break your yarn and start again at the right side facing. But I 
honestly really can't tell that much of a difference here and I don't think it will spoil the look of your blanket at all I think it will still look absolutely beautiful so do what works for you um, so if you go ahead and make your long edge half hexagons which are motif two in the pattern and then contact me and we will do motif three which is the short edge the different version of this half hexagon and you'll be happy as I said to know that rounds one to four are exactly the same it's just after that that we need to change it slightly so see you back here when you're ready to do those short edge ones right then we are now ready to work our short side half hexagon shapes Oh, it's so difficult to say those things. But then the brilliant thing about this is that the first four rows are exactly the same as the long edge half hexagons that we've just made. So for each of these, and we only need to make three of these for the entire blanket, um, we work exactly the same as we have for the other half hexagons. So rows one to four, exactly the same. So go ahead and work those, pop back to the video if you need to, back for reference. And then we will work row five. So row five is slightly different because now we're working into these chain spaces. We've got two chain three spaces and one, two, three, four, five chain six spaces. And before on the other half hexagons, we began with working single crochets into this bit. But what we're going to start with is our kind of um, shell stitch into this bit here. So then our single crochets come into the next one. So we just basically move around the hexagon. We're going to change the position that we slice the whole hexagon in half. So in this first chain three space, what we're going to do is basically chop a shell in half and chain one and begin with a double crochet there. And then we go straight into the chain two. And then in the same chain space, we're going to work a double crochet and then two half double crochet. So that should feel nice and familiar, but it's just chopped off the other side of that. And now in the next chain space, so it's a chain six space now, we're going to work two single crochet and then we're ready to work our full shell stitch here of two half double crochet a double crochet, chain two, a double crochet, oh, I've got you, and then two half double crochet, all in that chain six space. And then the next chain six space gets two single crochet in it. And then we work our bigger shell in this one. So two half double crochet, a double crochet, a chain two, a double crochet, and then two half double crochet. And then you probably guessed it, two single crochet into this one. And then we finish off with half of that shell or part of that shell of a two half double crochet, a double crochet, a chain two, and then one double crochet there at the very end. So that's slightly more than half, but we do need a space here to get the stitches in at the end. So now we break our yarn because we're ready to grab yarn F, which for me is the green. And so for our next row, which is going to be row six, we're going to join to this very first stitch here. And because we're working things um, slightly round, we're going one twist around the hexagon. We are going to begin here with a half double crochet, so just one in that first place, and then pop two half double crochet in that chain, uh, chain two space, sorry. And then we're going to chain one, we're going to skip the next three, and then we work our V stitch in the next stitch. So a double crochet, a chain one, and double crochet. And we work that same thing in the next stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then we chain one, we skip three, and then in our chain two space, we're going to pop three half double crochet. 
which is why I tripped over my words at the beginning there because it's normally three in there but to get the edge looking nice and neat we needed to put one in there and two in there. So now we chain one, we skip three and then it's our V stitches, double crochet, chain one, double crochet and the same in the next one. Chain one, skip the next three, and we pop three half double crochet into that chain two space. We chain one, we skip three, and then we work our V stitch. And the same in the next one. We chain one, skip three, and then we mirror what we did at the beginning by working two half double crochet in that chain two space, and then a half double crochet in the last one. And now we need to break our yarn and grab yarn A, ready to do the border. Right, so we are going to join to this first stitch here with A, and we are going to chain one, and we're going to begin by making our point here already. So we're going to double crochet, chain one, and double crochet all into that same stitch there. And then what we're going to do, we're going to skip the next stitch, and then we're going to work a half double crochet in the next three. So one, two, and three. And then we work two half double crochet into the next chain one space. And then we skip the next two and work two half double crochet into the next chain one space. And then we work a half double crochet into the next three. So one, I'm trying to do this at such a funny angle, <laughs> two and three. And now we're ready for our next point. So we're going to work a double crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet. And then we're back to familiar territory. And so we're going to work in the next three, we're going to work a half double crochet, one, two, three, and then two into the chain one space. We skip two, and then two half double crochet in the chain one space and then a half double crochet in the next three. One, oops, two, and three. And then we double crochet, chain one, and double crochet into that next stitch. Then we half double crochet in three. Two and three, two half double crochet into that chain one space. Skip the next two and then two half double crochet in the chain one. Then we half double crochet in the next three. One, two and three. And then we skip the next stitch and we end with a double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet in that last one. And so now we need to break our yarn because we're going back to the beginning again, just as we always do for row eight. Now row eight begins by joining to this first stitch and we chain one, and then we work a double crochet into that first stitch there. Oh, too keen there, I'm not too keen. <laughs> and then we're going to work a double crochet into that chain one space. We're going to skip the next stitch and then double crochet into the back loop only of the next 10. So this will feel nice and familiar. So we have one, two, and that 10, 
And so we're going to skip the next stitch and then into that chain one space, we work our point, which is two double crochet, chain one and two double crochet. And then we skip the next one and we go into the back loop of the next 10. We skip the next stitch and make our next point. Two, half uh, two double crochet, sorry, a chain one and two double crochet. Skip the next stitch and then off we go down the line, double crochet in the back loop of the next 10. Then we skip the next stitch, work one double crochet into that chain one space and then a final double crochet into the last stitch. Now we break our yarn and we go back to the beginning for our final row. So our final row of this half hexagon, again, join to the first stitch and we chain one. And now what we're going to do is going to work three double crochet into here. One, two, and three, all into that first stitch. And then we're going to skip the next stitch and then that brings us to our 10 and we need to find the back bars of these, remember? So turn over, pop through the back bar and then work a double crochet. Do that all the way along for the 10. Now we're ready to skip these two and then work into that chain one space. We're gonna do three double crochet. A chain one and then three double crochet all into that chain one space. One, two, and three. There we go, lost count. <laughs> right, so we skip two, and then 10 double crochet into the back bars. And that's 10. Then we're ready to skip two and work our point. So that's three double crochet, chain one and three double crochet in the chain one space. Then we skip two and work into the back bar of the next 10. And now we skip the next stitch and into the very last one we work three double crochet. And there we go. We need to break our yarn. And that is the short edge half hexagon. Now we need to make three of these and then obviously weave in your ends. And just to show you the um, comparison here, this is the short edge. It's not to do with um, this edge of how short it is. It's to do with where on the blanket they go. So if you look in the diagram, there's this shape go along the short edge of the blanket and this shape go along the long edge of the blanket. So you make more of these and less of these. So only three of these to make and eight of these to make. So go ahead, make all of your half hexagons and weave in your ends. Block them now if you'd like to as well. Uh, but the only other things that we need to do are make two teeny little quarter hexagons, which it will come as no surprise to you are slightly different from each other <laughs> because we need to get them facing the right way. So once you've done all your halves, come back and we'll make the two quarters, which are super quick and easy because you know all of the stitches now. Um, and then we'll be ready to weave in all of the, all of the ends and then join them all together. Mm -hmm.